following announcement has been paid for by Bros, Bumps, and Beers. No, it's not Simon from what culture? It's Pat, the EST of Triple B Gagne. And this is Bros, Bumps, and Beers presents The Light Side of the Ring. This week, Tales from the Road and the Sky. We're super back. Very excited. So we had la- the last light side of the ring that we did. Uh, we did tough guys in wrestling. Kind of prove that wrestling isn't fake. The bad F word in wrestling. Um, Jordan, uh, myself, and Matt talked about it after. And Jordan brought up the point. You know what? This would be super cool with visuals. So Jordan, I created some visuals for yes! us. Yes. So I'm this. Let's go. Let's go. Love it. We will have this on the podcast, and but then I we will also be releasing this portion of the podcast as a YouTube video. Oh um, shit! So you, okay, so you will be able to see what I am showing the guys. Sometimes you might hear them giggle a little bit, and you're like, "Why are they laughing?" You didn't really say anything funny. Well, most of what I say is funny, but because it'll be a YouTube, yeah. uh, or because it is a PowerPoint, there will be things that they see. It's a it's fucking a PowerPoint? PowerPoint. It is a PowerPoint. I can't. Okay, now I'm excited. Okay. I'm expecting so, some great shit here now. Now. Um, I, I fucking actually, love PowerPoint. I actually I don't know sent why. you guys uh, the, the the opening of what I was going to use for YouTube uh, for this segment. Very big, very very big, good reaction from you guys. So uh, before we go into that, for this podcast sake, uh, this week on the Light Side of the Ring, our second episode of Light Side of the Ring, I went with Tales from the Road and the Sky. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, I have a good wrestling, feeling about this is now. travelings when they're on the road, when they take the plane, and we'll end with one of the most notorious plane rides in wrestling folklore. Oh, history. baby. Fantastic. So now I got to figure out, I'm going to share the screen. Uh, my whole screen. I didn't account for this part in the recording. Yeah. Do you, oh, that do was you pretty know, fast. Jordan, do you know why you love PowerPoint? Why is that? Because like a fifth grader can make a PowerPoint. And, and, and I'm hoping it's the level of like a second grader. Like my right. true so, hope... Oh, is that is going off the rails uh, already. Oh, Pat Pat started at the very end. We're going to have okay, to do some so quality editing here. Here we are. The light side of the ring, <laughs> tales from the road, and the sky. So it's a pretty understand... be... <laughs> <laughs> See, there it is, the first giggle. Oh, that's uh, for sure somewhere in fucking Idaho. Like, just <laughs> yeah. the middle of Idaho. So um, in the past, uh, it was very well known that most wrestlers would be on the road 350 days a year. Uh, it would be a long haul. They would perform on the weekends and sometimes do double shots on Sundays. So they wrestle in the afternoon and then the evening in another city and they'd have to get there to do so. Um, they rarely saw their families. Uh, they never really had a normal life. And the prime example of that is Ric Flair. He'll come back later. Ric Flair just can't turn it off. Ric Flair is him now. There is no Fleer is, I believe, is, is his real last name. Rick, Rick Fleer, Richard Rick, Fleer, Richard Fleer. There, that guy's dead, and Rick Flair is who he is through and through now. And he attributes that to being on the road all the time and having to be Rick Flair all the time. Stuck in um, kayfabe. So they would eat. I mean, sometimes when they could afford it, they would sleep. Sometimes when the coast is clear, that'll be obvious later. Um, they would be in hotel rooms with three to four people to kind of cut costs. And these are wrestlers. So we're talking men who are six feet and above, usually uh, close to 300 pounds. So four people in a hotel room, not much room to operate in. Um, and when boredom, boredom would set in, that they would circumvent, big word, look it up, uh, that with booze. <laughs> but and but with, you pronounced boredom wrong. So. Did I? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Boredom. Um, they would circumvent that with booze and drugs. Um, so not a great recipe for success uh, in the long haul of things. So they were uh, preparing years ago for a pandemic. Yeah. So uh, some stories were tame. Others are funny. And well, others are kind of borderline scary. Uh, so we'll start with this kind of um, this part, of, uh, an interview given by Kevin Nash. Uh, Kevin Nash stated that in an interview... Oh, that's one of the most overrated wrestlers of all time right there. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> that guy you know screams uh, overrated. No, that's Kevin Nash. That's not Diesel. That's oh, not right. Diesel. You're right. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Sorry, Diesel. That's not uh, Scott Nash. Scott Nash. <laughs> Scott, no, that's it's Kevin Hall. That's Kevin Hall. That's Kevin Hall, Kevin Hall. That's fucking Kevin Kevin Hall. Hall right? <laughs> so uh, what happened was Kevin Nash explained that touring with the world with wrestlers requires you to follow simply one rule. There is really only one rule when it comes to traveling with wrestlers, and that is never fall asleep. Never, ever fall asleep. 
Um, the reason for that is uh, whether you're traveling by bus uh, or you're traveling by plane, uh, it is very important. <laughs> No matter how tired you are or how we're gonna owe up get, we're gonna up. owe Getty images like a thousand dollars by the end of this. <laughs> so it was to never fall asleep. It was no matter city how you were paying by that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so European tours were probably the worst. Um, and why does Pat have like Pat picked a plane where one engine's on fire? It looks like. It yeah, might does. have been the plane that had the, the problem with it. Oh, that's awesome. I never noticed I that. Can't it can still pick. fly, though. Pat's like, here, we have all these pictures of normal airplanes, but let's pick the one with the I'm right move us on here. Fire. Um, now, so next, so there's punishments for those people that would fall asleep. Um, These punishments uh, involve some things were tame. Um, a shaving cream hat, for those of oh, you who are sounds, watching this on YouTube. Stylish. This is shaving cream. They would fill your whole head with shaving cream. Um, did you just explain what shaving cream is? Yes, I did. Yes. Okay. Good, uh, good job, Pat. Thank you. They would actually super glue your sunglasses to your face. That's if they could. fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and then one of the more tame ones, but not really tame, kind of more offensive. Uh, they give you the old Sharpie mustache. Uh, um, now, the issue with the Sharpie mustache. Of, easy to get rid of. The issue with the Sharpie mustache, if it was based off a character in a historical character that oh. not many people want to be associated with, you can fill in the blanks. Oh, mm -hmm. I thought yeah. you were going to say it was like they drew so much of their face that it was kind of like a, a blackface offensive thing. But no, I, no. I, I see they went a different yeah. offensive mm. direction yes. with this. Um, uh, and the final one, which uh, there is a, some a fam famous instances of this, uh, they would actually shave off your eyebrows. Um, so uh, <laughs> as you see here. <laughs> uh, the one, two, three kid, Sean Waltman, was actually a uh, victim of this. He did fall asleep. Making him a, work plane ride. after that is, I guess, how long would you have to be off? Like a month to grow no, your the eyebrows most, back? Uh, actually, the most important part of this, he actually uh, got his eyebrows shaved off. And then the next day had to do promo shots. Which that's is fantastic. No that's so yeah. incredible. I mean, that's based. I, I was just assume Sean Maltman would say, I have no eyebrows. So it, that's kind of what I was going with. That's, um, that looks like you photoshopped his eyebrows off. But you can assure me no, that's a real picture. Um, now, the most notorious when it comes to being bored. That is a hell of a mullet, by the that's way. That's fucking uh, something right there. Taking some drugs. Uh, Sean Waltman tells a famous story. Kevin Nash repeats it. Um, you try random drugs. Let's just say that uh, when you're on the European tour. Uh, so X-Pac walked into a dressing room after a European show, threw a Ziploc bag of drugs onto a table and uh, exclaimed, these are, let me get this right, uh, phenobarbitars. That's type of drug. I looked into yeah, it. Yeah. If you I say so, it, bud. Um, I looked into it and actually this is used to help people with seizures and epilepsy. Um, and then X-Pac followed up by saying, I don't know what they are, but let's make sure we take four to five of them at once. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, oh. Yeah. So uh, the best part to come back boredom as well, when it wasn't drugs, they had wrestlers had this weird thing of they were bored. They would go to tanning beds. So if you go back and watch on the WWE Network, I looked it up a little bit. You will notice when they're coming fresh off a European tour. Guys are extremely tan, like to the point where they're orange. And I always thought it was the beaches in Europe. No, they go tanning bed. They don't do beaches. They don't have time. So they go to tanning beds. Apparently tanning beds in Europe are extremely cheap or easy to access. I don't know. But tanning beds. So everybody came back super tan. Take now, if we, can get, if we can get into some stories now, um, the first one, it could be very tame. Trish Stratus, uh, one of the all-time great women's wrestlers. Uh, tells a story of how she was at an airport. She kind of did some autographs with some fans, and then she was kind of bombarded with more autographs. And it was to the point where she was kind of like, wow, this is kind of crazy. I didn't realize that was this famous. Some uh, airport security came up to her and said, hey, why don't we take you to somewhere else so you can have some peace and quiet? And she was like, that's super weird. That's never happened to me before. Um, so she was super impressed with that. And then she was actually upgraded to first class and escorted onto the plane before anybody else so that she could really get comfortable. Uh, Trish Stratish being a, a nice hometown Canadian girl, uh, didn't think much of it. And she was well, actually Toronto, the most, Jordan. yeah, I, she might be the most humble person Toronto's ever produced. I'll tell you that. <laughs> she was, she was actually the most impressed that when she asked for a diet Coke, she received it in about a minute. As <laughs> 
First of all, asking for soda on an airplane is a, oh, I guess first class. I was thinking like coach and it's like, I feel like they would just look at you and be like, just shut up. We're going to come by with the cart. You pleb. Now, um, so she got off the plane, (laughs) she was actually escorted off the plane with security again. So she was just living the high life. And then as the security let her go, they go, I hope you had a nice flight. Enjoy your day, Mrs. Spears. Um, (laughs) That's not Britney Spears. That's not Britney Spears? Yeah, she has hair. She has hair and she's not controlled by her father. Oh, that is Christina Aguilera. That's my bad. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh. Pat. Um, Even if you did that on purpose, that's still amazing. <laughs> Pat, if you, I understand that you – was this kind of like a genie in a bottle situation? I mean, it could be. Did it rub you the right way? Did it rub you the right way? It was dirty, I'll tell you that. Oh, oh <laughs> there you went. You know what, Pat? You are beautiful, it's beautiful in guys. every it's single beautiful. way. Oh, Matt. In every single kind of way. Oh, Matt, you beat me to it. All right, so now let's, let's... I, I thought we were all doing one, so so let's continue <laughs> no, to we're going to continue to elevate the tales from the road before we get to our last story. Um, yeah. The next one is a Canadian story, actually. Ooh. Um, this is pretty well known. Um, it was with uh, that is quite the stock map of Canada. <laughs> yes, and it happened in the northern part of Canada. Um, thank so, you. For, thank you for pointing that out. Absolutely. Um, this is actually a story that is told multiple times by Christian Edge and Rhino. But for this sake of this story, at this point, it was Sexton Hardcastle, which is what Edge went by. Way better name than Edge. Amazing yeah, name. Super good. Amazing. Um, and Rhino. So what ha- what the story goes? Well, I was is... I was really hoping he had like a, <laughs> a picture like, of a Rhino. Yeah, like another name that wasn't Rhino. I could find found that. the worst oh, picture so of Rhino hungry. you could find. Clearly. Um, so they did all these northern tours, and they called them. I believe they called them like the Death. The Deathly Northern Tours. Nor- because Northern Death Tours. That's it, what it is. Um, so they would travel on, not roads, because at this time ice there were roads, no baby. roads. They would do ice, they were like ice road truckers, pretty oh, much. Oh, man. And they were a very small group of wrestlers, and they all traveled together in a, a large van or couple vans, because they had all the gear, all the ring equipment, and every piece of talent. That's so uh, they would up. They would travel to Northern Reserves and do small shows. And this is kind of how Canadian wrestlers, you know, cut their teeth in the business. So the story goes, they're driving. Rhino is fall, is asleep on top of ring of the ring itself in the back of the van. And he's awakened by people who are in panic. Because he looks out and the van is sinking. <laughs> because they have broken through the ice. They've reached this like kind oh, of weird gosh. valley where the ice is not stable. And they've went, th- they've gotten about halfway through it. And then they started going under the water. So it's like three in the morning and there's nobody there that's going to come save you. So Rhino jumps out of the van and the story goes, everybody has said this is true. He basically pulls the van out himself. I believe that. I believe that guy was, I that see, guy was I, in yeah. his heyday. That dude was I don't want to believe. I don't want to believe any other story. I don't want to believe that. That is a fridge. Rhino's, is Rhino Canadian? No. no. So was he just up on the tour because he's Rhino? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think he was he's buddies with Edge and Christian, so I think that's, that's awesome. kind of how it worked out. So yeah, that sure. there's there's a danger aspect to it. If you really love wrestling, you're gonna have to go through these northern tours, it seems, if you're Canadian okay, at some point. So I'm like slowly realizing now that the furthermost northern tip of Quebec is basically Nunavut. Mm-hmm. I Whoa. didn't realize that Quebec and Newfoundland went up that high. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. And so Ontario, welcome to geography. And like, like where I grew up is essentially New York. Um, so now, yeah, those you're are essentially ki- an American. Those are kind of two of the tamer That's stories. Fair. Now, That's fair. guys, how about we get into some really messed up shit? Yep. Are you going on the plane? Please tell me you're not, going on the plane. Not yet. Not going okay. on the plane. We yeah, got to oh. pe- People aren't here for the 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 soft stuff. Even though Sexton Hardcastle, um, I don't <laughs> yeah. think has ever he been clearly soft was not the life. soft. Stuff. He went in the ring six inches hard. Now I'm going to put two <laughs> men up on the screen here and my beautiful PowerPoint. And you will know exactly what story I am talking uh, about. Um, this is uh, in 1987. The Iron Sheik and, and uh, Jim, the hacksaw, Jim Duggan. Uh, he, at this time, kayfabe is very ingrained in the wrestling world. Pat, what kayfabe is kayfabe? Mean, they, oh, sorry. Thank you. Kayfabe Excuse meaning me. that they treat wrestling storylines as if they're real, as if they're fact. Uh, so good guys are good guys. Bad guys are bad guys. Never do the two co-mingle. Um, so at this time, Hacksaw is one of the top baby faces, and the Iron Sheik is one of the top heels, just for a good visual guys, representation. Guys. One is good, one uh, is bad. Go. 
No way. That's what it was in the 80s? I could have yes. been told by their stereotypes. Um, so the problem with this whole thing <laughs> is that at this point, um, Hacksaw and Sheik are friends. And they decide, screw k -Fib. Let's travel together. So they get in the same car. Normally wouldn't be a big issue, but wrestlers are not the greatest drivers. They don't make the, the best decisions at this time. Especially when you're smoking weed while driving. Well. Allegedly. They're, 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 they're playing with a herb. <laughs> Um, and there is also medicinal. it was medicinal yes uh and uh, also there is rumors that there it was snowing at the time <laughs> um so they had this going on and they were driving a little reckless and they were pulled over obviously uh usually the biggest story would be wrestlers have drugs in their car uh but actually f the f biggest part of the story headline news was that a good guy wrestler and a bad guy wrestler were in the same not just a good guy and a bad guy the, the all-American hero, one of the all-American heroes, and the bad guy yeah. from Saudi yeah. Arabia, or wherever, Iran. 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 Wait, so yeah, <laughs> not the drugs, but I'm the surprised fact they that took a, a car good guy wrestler. Considering where he's from, yeah. So a good guy wrestler, wow, <laughs> bad guy wrestler, <laughs> up against each other in a match, but then they get in the same car and they smoke a doobie and have some fun with some snow. Allegedly, allegedly. Um, yeah, so that's, and then another one that's fun that comes to mind before we get to the main event of our evening. Wait, Pat, um, hold on. What happened after the, the, they got pulled over? Oh yeah. They got pulled over and were both arrested and, uh, the Sheik was fired very quickly. Okay. Uh, and Hacksaw was also fired, which he says, he claims to this day that this really crushed his push in the company and he never really recovered from that i'm sure and that's what so. it was i'm sure that's what yeah. it was yeah, yeah he's he's just killing it with all his charisma and all his in-ring talent um <laughs> overrated as hell uh but yeah so that kind of killed both their careers in the wwe they both kind of returned at one point but it never really was the same hacks on ever held a title Sheik was never the Sheik again Sheik had his own problems you could watch a documentary on prime it's pretty pretty wild shit he looks like he was in a kurt angled neck situation so once again, I'm going to move us so that you can see. Um, so at this point, we're going to get to the Steiner brothers who are certified yes. insane, um, who traveled a lot with Sting. Uh, this is Surfer Sting at the time in WCW. Um, there was an incident with our man, Paul Heyman, as you could kind of see on the screen in my amazing PowerPoint. Uh, so Heyman traveled with Fatu and Samu. Ooh, this is going to be bad. Uh, so, oh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, I could do that. Uh, so they traveled together. And the Steiner Brothers' biggest fun thing they used to do while driving on the road was they played this super fun game. They would drive up really fast next to a car of people that they knew. Rick would climb out of the window full speed in motion and open the door of the other car to scare them. I mean, they're not wrong. Like, that's you terrifying. That you can't make that up. I have never heard this that's story. That's very scary. And this so, is... Paul Heyman, being the absolute genius that he is, told Fatu and Samu, who he was driving around in his rental car, he said, just lock the door. They can't get in. Duh. Genius move. Yeah. Genius, like, big brain move. That's why I Heyman mean... was the leader of the bunch. You know, it's that type of elite thinking. So, the Steiners pull up next to him with Sting, who is the driver, and Rick gets out of the window and pulls on the door. It's locked. Can't get in. Um, so instead of just giving up, the Steiners do something else hilarious. They start taking stuff out of their car and pelleting Heyman's car full speed while he's driving. When I say pelleting with things, I don't know what they do, threw. Do you but mean they... pelting? Pelting, that one. Yes, that you is meant yeah, pelting. Because uh, they're not throwing um, a trendy. Yeah, they're not throwing trendy bicycle sorry, apparatus. Sorry. Words, at words are tough. I words believe tough. <laughs> Pelleting. Oh no, they were. You know what he was? He was. He was furring them. He was literally creating fur coats at them. Oh, there you go. Pelting. Oh, he's throwing. Yeah. He's throwing pelts. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they started throwing stuff, and I don't know what they threw. I couldn't find that in my research. They destroyed Heyman's car to the point where it was written off. What was he throwing? Rocks? I'm not sure. So to this day, actually, Paul Heyman cannot rent a car in North Carolina. <laughs> To this day, he cannot rent a car in North Carolina. Um, Wait, all thanks to the Steiner Brothers' uh, hilarious never mind. joke. Never mind. Hilarious joke. Um, so, uh, we get to now the main event of the Lights Out of the Ring. Low-hanging fruit there, buddy. What's the problem? What's the problem? <laughs> Nothing. 
keep going. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right, so it has given the name, very famous name. It is the plane ride from hell. H e double hockey sticks, <laughs> baby. This is. I'm just one glad of that plane's not on fire. Actively, I would say this is the most notorious road story in the history of wrestling. This could have been the whole episode. It could have, um, yeah. but I'll get, I'll kind of breeze through it a little bit. So what happened was they were, they had just finished a pay-per-view, the uh, insurrection pay-per-view in Britain. And they, what happened in the past was Vince McMahon would rent out, purchase uh, a bunch of planes, 747s to get all of the talent, all of the crew from Europe to the States and back again. Um, so they could do raw the next day. So they could do raw the next night. Now and get everybody back. Pat, just out of curiosity, I don't know if you know this. A seven forty seven holds like hundreds of people. So what, are we talking multiple or just one? It should just I, be one, right? So what I'm reading, it's been it was two. I believe that's it was two. unbelievable yeah. the amount of people. Unless you're thinking people are going to spread out, but like that's a fuckload of space. So the best part of all of this was not only was the flight free, but uh, full bar. And open bar, yes. Um, which Sounds like sign me up. up. That's my future wedding. When you have a 747 full of substance abusers who are fresh off a very long European tour with very little breaks, recipe for success, right there. Yeah. Um, so the main players on this, nothing could go wrong. Nothing could go wrong. So the main players in this story are Kurt, Mister Perfect Henning, Brock Lesnar, Ric Flair, Gold Dust. Scott Hall, Michael P.S. Hayes, and X-Pac, Sean Waldman. So I'm going to break this down in a, to a couple of stories. Um, it starts off very innocently. Scott Hall and Mr. Perfect start tagging people with shaving cream. I guess wrestlers really think shaving cream is hilarious. Um, so it's innocent and enough. And then it kind of escalates real quick. I would imagine that in the wrestling community, shaving cream is everywhere simply because they have to like shave all the time. Yeah, you can't just like have five o'clock shadow. Yeah, so I can I can imagine like they each have their own like massive can of shaving cream they take with them everywhere. All right, so the first incident I nicknamed it the Minnesota tussle. Um, so this is between I can't wait for this area. <laughs> two two men from Minnesota. Uh, if for those of you who don't know what Minnesota is, it is a it is a state, the state of Minnesota, which is like a province if you're comparing it to the to the Canada, and this is between Brock Lesnar. And Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig. Both Minnesota natives. Um, and both... Riding amateur... buddies. They rode together, right? Yeah, they were buddies. And they were both... Ama they have both have amateur wrestling backgrounds. Um, Brock was a little more decorated than Mr. Perfect. Uh, so what happened was you're 25,000 feet in the air. What are you going to do? You're going to egg on your buddy to the point where you get into a takedown contest on a plane. A 747. Uh, that um, sounds something like something that so everybody decided, should do. So Kurt told Brock, you can't take me down. There's no way you could take me down. I could block every takedown you give me. So it starts off innocently enough, and they start kind of getting aggressive. And then Brock gets pissed because he can't take down Kurt Henning. Um, so they start pushing and shoving, and they really get aggressive. And then bump into the emergency exit door. Oh, man. 25,000 feet in the air. I would um, shit myself. Now I looked into it. It's very, very hard to bust open that door. It's yeah, it's, it's has, it has four locks on it. Yeah, you can't just pull a lever and it opens. Um, but it made you mean movies have lied to me my entire yes, life? Absolutely, they have. Um, so they only had two moves. parachutes, Matt, mm -hmm. and everybody on the plane had to fight to the mm -hmm. death. To figure out who gets the two parachutes, but one of the parachutes has been booby trapped from the beginning by Vince McMahon. And anyways, that's uh, the that's the Marine Nine. Uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone starts to get a little nervous because Brock's a big dude and they think he can open that door and kill everybody. Um, so it takes about five men to separate them. They get separated, everything's okay. But it was a big kerfuffle, and not everybody was okay with it. And Vince, kerfuffle, let, good work. let me remind you, Vince McMahon is on the plane. Okay. Oh, well, I didn't. So he, okay, so he's yeah, oh, he's probably he's probably on the upper deck. Yeah, he's he's not <laughs> there, but he knows what's going on. <laughs> yeah. um, the next incident, uh, two incidents, involve Ric Flair and Goldust. Both uh, fantastic robes. Now I'll just say 
I'm not going to go into great detail of it. Ric Flair loves to party, parties too much, can't separate himself from his gimmick. And Goldust has had a history of substance abuse. Um, so Ric Flair actually emerges from the bathroom wearing one of his famous robes and nothing else. So he's naked underneath his robe. Absolutely trash. Um, so I'm and, imagining this picture right here, he's just letting the boys hang out. Yeah. Um, and then allegedly uh, he does get sued in civil court. Uh, he does get a little grabby with a flight attendant. It's a little, it goes a little further than that, but I'm not going to broadcast it. It was just bad news bears. Not great, um, Bob. Not great. Not great. Uh, not okay, a good so look. he was going up to them apparently and going, woo, and opening yeah. his robe. Yeah, no, it was worse than that, but uh, we'll <laughs> leave it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Um, yeah. So uh, at that point, <clears throat> Gold Dust is also hammered out of his mind. And he's actually on the flight with his ex-wife, Terry Reynolds, who everybody knows works for WWE. And so he is drunk and tells her he loves her and it's really awkward. And then it gets worse when he grabs the PA system and starts serenading <laughs> her in front of everybody. I love it. I don't see a downside to this at all. Um, no, he, no, this probably doesn't go bad at all. This is when Jim Ross gets up and kind of puts an end to it. And then Goldust also gets inappropriate with a flight attendant. So honestly, both these men kind of get inducted to the scumbag hall of fame oh big induction <laughs> round of yeah. applause everyone not scumbag a great not hall a great look fame. not a great look for both oh, those big, guys what a big day for those two big induction um uh, then Rick a, flair's been in the hall of fame like four times now yeah this, that's another ring on his finger not a great ring to have <laughs> so jim ross at the at this point who is also on the flight is the president of talent relations he's there for all of this wait so why wasn't he helping gold dust he did stop him. He no, but him. if he's the president of talent relations, that means he's helping everyone in relationships, uh, right? Ah, yes. Uh, literal. Funny. Okay. I was trying to give you a chance to have a drink, Pat. Come on, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, a very quick hitter. Uh, not surprising, knowing his uh, knowing his issues. Uh, Scott Hall, Razor Ramon. <laughs> um, this, was is on very, the this is very much like left side cool dude in high school right side <laughs> emo guy in high school like it's the yeah. same person guy who gets to high school and is super cool and then the 20 year old who's still in high school and still yes. thinks he's cool but just looks sad 100 percent. um so at this point because it's an open bar scott hall loves his booze um he doesn't do anything too bad uh but he does pass out in his chair <laughs> so fast um and the bad part was everyone took turns checking his vitals because they thought he was dead Oh boy! Yeah, didn't he so, say some stuff to a flight attendant before that? Yeah, he's in the scumbag hall of fame too. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, better get the kidding. banner. Uh, no, no banner for this. No, one. not so, an official. I feel, I feel like he, he he because he passed out. He saved himself from the hall of fame. Yeah. yeah. If he, um, if if there's not a banner, he's not officially in the scumbag hall of fame. The big, the big incident that I love the most is the. Last I thought one. it was the Brock thing. Oh, nope. No, 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 no. Oh, so almost going through the emergency exit is not the big no. deal? No, this Fantastic. one's more funny. Hey, this, we end on a funny note here. Okay. Uh, so the incident number five is with uh, Michael <laughs> P.S. Hayes. Uh, Michael P.S. Hayes still works for WWE at this time. He does, like, booking. He's with talent relations. He's kind of all over the place. He's been with the company. Wears years. the worst suits known yeah, to man. Fashion statement. And I put this is uh, I'm with stupid on Michael P.S. Hayes uh, for a reason. So what happened was... What's the number one rule that we learned in the first slide, guys? Don't pass out. That and the roads on the screen might not be the literal <laughs> ones on the roads that tra traveled. Uh, so Michael P.S. Hades gets absolutely obliterated, as did most of the talent. This um, guy does not look like someone who enjoys alcoholic beverages. Oh, sure. he, Michael Hayes is a big jackass on the plane. And he's in a position of power, and he's really being a jerk. And no one can say anything to him because they don't want to get fired. Um, so he's being a dick. And at one point he actually needs to go to the bathroom. Uh, and it is rumored. It has been allegedly said that he thinks he's in the bathroom at one point and <laughs> almost starts taking a leak on Linda McMahon. Oh, that's the boss's, that's the boss's yeah. wife. Oh my God. Yeah. Vince's wife. He almost pees on her. Um, it's at this point that they kind of get him settled. They put him in his chair and he passes out. So enter. One more part of the story. I'm not going to leave it out. So the night before at the Insurrection pay-per-view, JBL has a banger of a match. JBL, John Brave, Bradshaw, Layfield, and bleeds. He's He bled from his forehead. Great match. Go back, look at it. So he's bandaged up. And before Michael Hayes passes out, 
he's messing with JBL and at one point slaps JBL's forehead, <laughs> causing him to bleed through his bandage onto his custom suit. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because at this point... I'd that, probably be very understanding of this situation. It is at this point that Michael Hayes passes out in his chair, which you don't do. So enter Sean Waltman, who is a notorious shit disturber. He grabs a pair of scissors. Is he overrated though, Pat? He's so overrated. He uh, grabs a pair of scissors and proceeds to, not before Jerry Lawler begins giggling like a schoolgirl in high school, he cuts off Michael P.S.A.'s famous ponytail. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. You know Cuts who really off. got upset by this? The Young Bucks dad. Because it's like oh, an- wow. another ponytail died. <laughs> it, he had a twitch in his hair. His scalp was twitching. He's like, oh, ponytails died. Oh, man. So, yeah, he cuts off his ponytail. And the best part is that no one tells Michael Hayes. Not yeah, well, one when person. you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, right? Oh, I forgot to, I forgot my last animation here. Oh, this oh. is fun. Oh, here we go. Why isn't it working? There it is. Oh, that's JBL. Oh, there it bounces. And he's JBL. bleeding. Oh! <laughs> oh there it is. JBL so, headshot. So Michael Hayes gets off the plane, and the only time he realizes that he doesn't that's have a ponytail really is when he's animation. when he's going through customs. And he realizes it when looking into a window that he doesn't have his ponytail. <laughs> um, so they get through customs. That's the end of the plane ride from hell. There's a lot of aftermath to this, but the best part, I think, with Pat, Michael I think, can we call it fallout? Fallout, sure. For numerous fallout, reasons. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the fallout from this Thank you. is as follows. Um, Mr. Perfect is fired and shortly passes away after. So is That's this, do you think this was one of those, like, you know, like, you know, when you stop doing, like, you know how we sometimes said, like, Ric Flair, when he hangs him up, might not yeah. be long after that. Yeah. yeah. I think it was kind of the same situation. Yeah, yeah I think so, yeah. Um, Goldust gets fired, but later returns. Um, Hall is, uh, Scott Hall is actually released, but more so because of the phys- his physical state. He was he just, big he's a mess. It. He's a total yeah. mess. Um, also, Scott Hall, along with Ric Flair, are sued in civil lawsuits. Because the flight attendants, By the flight the scum, attendants. yeah, the scum, the scumbag Hall of Fame. Um, Jim Ross destroys everybody on his blog, he buries everyone, and rightfully so, um, condemning them for their unprofessional behavior. Um, and the best part is Michael Hayes, he's kind of the butt of the joke at the end of the day because Waltman goes into the boys' locker room the next night and tapes the severed ponytail onto the wall of the rest That's of the dress. Amazing. That's savage, I love it. It's like it's like a trophy deer. Say like what you will box. about Sean Waltman. I think he's overrated as a wrestler. Kind of hilarious what he did to Michael Hayes. <laughs> um, so as you can see, Tales from the Road kind of varies from kind of tame stories, rough stories of actually getting to places on the road. And then wrestlers, they're bored. It's notoriously bored. And they kind of just need to fill the hours. So that's what they do. And the plane ride from hell is kind of a culmination of a lot of bored guys, a lot of tired guys, an open bar, and just so many idiots getting together and kind of ruining everybody's day. Pat, thank you. Thank you for this. Was that it? <laughs> I, that would be it. Thank you I very love... much for this wonderful. The addition of PowerPoint has made me so much more involved that I appreciate it. I think it very my much. favorite part is that you just went white background. Like a fucking grade yes. nine student who I did this it. three like three hours before presenting it. I the only thing you could do to make me happier is I want all everything in the at one point the images have to draw be drawn with you by hand and MS Paint. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, that'll be the end of our uh, our presentation oh, here today. I okay. Full disclosure: I just texted the group and said uh, I kill the PowerPoint presentation <laughs> for the close. Thank you for not doing that. Yes. Um, so you're gonna like you're gonna like and subscribe to our YouTube page. You're gonna follow us on all our social medias, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you're gonna support local, you're gonna drink local, you're gonna support local businesses. And thank you for listening to my PowerPoint presentation. Um, and we will see you next week on another for another episode of Bros, Bumps, and Beers.